that's the way he got in. Okay, this maybe isn't quite so fair saying a poor shoeing job, but these are things that you might look at um, and look for in, in you know, some things to watch for that I've kind of mentioned, and I'll kind of pick them out a little bit. Um, clinches, okay, sometimes your shoer will put clinches on their, on their shoes, and that's really just to help stabilize those shoes, help to keep them in place, okay? And they will put them in different locations for whatever your horse's knees might particularly be, okay? Um, but this is a toe clip that evidently, if you look real close, is probably not straight on the, on the toe of that horse, okay? The one you can really need to watch and are the clinches, okay? This one is quite high, which means it's probably into the sensitive structures, okay? Um, this nail is quite low, and so for it to re reach into that six to eight weeks before you're gonna reset him, it's probably gonna start breaking out at the bottom, all right? Um, this nail is probably too far back. If you picked up his foot, it's probably beyond that widest part of his foot, okay? Um, this space between the shoe and the foot, you have to kind of gauge that, okay? You want the foot down on the shoe, but once in a while you get a horse that had a crack, okay? So he's going to have a little bit of an area that's broke out of that particular area of his foot until it grows down. So you have to kind of look and see, you know, why you knew that horse had a crack and so it's just got to grow out. Um, here they say the heels are a little bit short um, and this heel sticking out a little bit too, too far. Sometimes you might have it that far for the reason, you know, the problem that your horse might be having. Okay, um, some things to watch for, and we're all guilty of not getting them set when they should be. Um, kind of your best, you, you really should have them set up on, a, on every six to eight weeks. And you might say, my horse's feet don't grow that fast. Um, for the nature of the shoes wearing, the clinches staying tight and all those types of things, pretty much six to eight weeks is about what it's gonna take. Even if you're not shoeing them, they probably should be trimmed about every that, that time frame. Some horses' feet are going to grow a little faster than others. Um, I'll show you some confirmation of some horses that you'll probably want to put on a six-week schedule versus the eight-week schedule. Your best thing is to try to reschedule your farrier when he's there for the next time and keep him on a regular basis, okay? That's sometimes easier said than done, but everybody appreciates, you know, a regular schedule so you know when they're coming back. Um, and and you're not like, oh my God, I never got him done, okay? Some things that you'll notice is, is over time, um, when they start getting overgrown, is that the, the foot's gonna grow over the shoe, okay? If you can't see the shoe and you gotta pick it up to see if he still has them on, they're probably long since should have been over, overdone, okay? The clinches will get loose, the shoes will get wore thin. Um, uh, most of the time, the, sh the, the thin part of the shoe is up here at the toe, okay? You can see here the, the, the hoofs overgrowing on the foot. The clinches will get real loose. Sometimes if you walk them on the concrete, like I said, they'll jingle, jingle, jingle because they've gotten really loose on you. Um, okay, this is something you see. You see something funky on this one? He does not have shoes on. This is our same sorrel horse, but the opposite foot. He, he, he lost a shoe, okay? And the thing that's gonna be a headache with him is if you look on this foot and uh, over, I believe it's on this side, when he lost his shoe, he ripped off some of his foot, okay? Or some of, he's broken out down here. So when they go to reset this horse, and I'm not sure how long he is, okay? If, if they lose a shoe and they broke out some of their hoof wall, but he's got a lot of hoof growth, so when they trim him down, it's not a big deal, that's okay. This horse's hoof wall, to me, doesn't look very um, long, and so he might be scratching his head when we say put a shoe back on this horse because he doesn't have very much to nail it to. So it's not a good thing when they lose shoes, especially horses that are pretty narrow on their hoof walls. Okay, a little bit of a repeat, um, but kind of a guide is they tend, their feet tend to grow between a quarter to a half an inch a month. That's not very much, but it doesn't have to be very much. They need to be reset, okay? Um, the toe will tend to grow faster than the heel, okay? We're gonna talk about some horses that are long in their toe and short in their heel. Some horses, th th that is a problem, and you've gotta reset them a little bit more frequently um, to help keep their foot um, aligned and kept, keep it underneath themselves. Shed their fog twice a year. Your routine daily care, picking their feet out, um, variety of things are what's gonna be some of the best stuff that you can do. Okay, 
a little bit about general stuff and all these things you see that are going to fix your horse's feet, those brittle feet, okay? Yes, you've all seen that white feet tend to be more brittle than a black foot. I mean, there are people that won't even own a white-footed horse. Um, but they tend to be more brittle um, than a horse with has black feet. The biggest thing that's going to affect how hard um, and your horse's feet are are going to be environmental effects and to some degree a little bit their plane of nutrition or some things that you, you can do on that way. But the environment's going to have a lot to do with it. If it is hot, if it is very, very dry, okay, their feet are going to be very hard. Just ask a shoer in August and they hate to have to trim some of those horses because they're very, very tough to get, to get trimmed. Some of those horses' feet start to crack and are real, real brittle, okay. Um, so, you know, some people will try to do things that the biggest way that you're going to get moisture back into those horses' feet are environmental kinds of things of getting them into water. Most of the products that you see, hoof dressings and that, are primarily going to keep the moisture in the foot that's there. So a good plan, a good program of starting this time of year to hoof dress your horse's feet is going to help them when summertime comes. Because remember, those feet don't grow very fast. Um, sometimes it doesn't seem to be that way anymore that if you run into where it's excessively wet areas, wet times, um, you can have the other side of problems where the shoes won't stay on. White line disease where you get a separation um, sometimes occur when their feet are too, too moist. Um, there's a lot of variety of supplements and things out there and one has really shown with some long-term research to improve the integrity of your horse's feet and that is the biotin, the bio supplements with biotin. Okay, and you can get straight biotin. Um, this study was done with the Lipizzan horses and but the thing about it is, is it will help the integrity, the strength of their feet. It just takes a long time to get it to them because their feet grow so slow. The biotin will also help if you have a horse that is real brittle with their mane and tail, okay? Those type of fibers, those types of um, makeup um, are what biotin is going to help and enhance. But they fed these horses for two and a half years, the biotin, okay? So within about a year and a half, they did have increase in the strength, okay? They didn't get them to grow any faster, but the integrity of their foot worked much better. So don't think you're going to feed it today and in a week say, oh, this biotin's helping. The thing that you might see is that their hair coat might improve. That's probably going to be the first thing that you see an improvement on. Um, we're not very good at grooming, or well, I wouldn't say grooming, but scrub, 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 you know, brushing our horses. And when we had some of them on biotin, the stud horse that I told you the story of that we had in Kansas that was so terrible in his feet, we put him on biotin and it did help his feet and he had the most gorgeous hair coat of anything in the barn. And I attributed that back to, to helping him with some, of, you know, with some of the biotin. Um, you know, there's other things out there, depending on the nutritional status of your horse, might have some benefit. Um, but as far as sure strength and integrity of the feet, the biotin is probably the one that you're going to see the best benefit from. Okay, we got a, a, few, a little bit of time here, so I'm going to go ahead and ta show you a little bit of stuff here on some conformational things to kind of watch in some of your horses. And this is related back to that hoof pasture and access. Um, and um, some things to watch for to help with their soundness. And we kind of look at them from the side and there's two categories that I just want to bring your attention to. And one's what we call, the fancy term is the broken back hoof passion axis. That's a horse that's got a long toe and a heel that's r that runs underneath himself, okay? So here his toe is long, his heel goes underneath him, and these lines that we'd like to be nice and straight and parallel or not, it comes down and angles down, angles down, and that, okay? Um, <coughs> these kind of horses, the biggest thing that you'll notice is they tend to have pain in their heels and all these other things with some of the ligaments and stuff are all related to that, but the biggest thing is you'll notice is they tend to have pain in their heels. Um, they could end up with navicular. They might just be sore in their heels because their foot shoved out in front of them, kind of like that picture I showed you of that one horse, and they end up walking on their heel with their foot out ahead of them instead of being up underneath themselves. Okay. Um, what you do for these horses is, these are the horses you probably need to have reset every six weeks rather than eight because what grows the fastest part of their foot? 
the toe, okay? Um, the toe goes faster than the heel, and this is a horse we had at the building, and he was a wonderful horse, but he's a classic example of a horse that does this, and he actually has shoes on right now, and we didn't have him clean the best for pictures, but anyway, you can see that this horse has a long toe, his heels are underrun. Look, if you look at the line that bisects down through here, okay, whoops, how far his heel is out in front of him. This is after we trim that horse's foot, and honest to God, it's the same horse. Okay, and after we got that horse trimmed where his toe was shortened and got some heel back on him, look now when you look at that line that comes down through here and it goes bisects the bulb of his heel. Okay, and here it's shoved way out in front of him. So his base of support is not underneath him where most of his weight is. After we shorten that, let his heel come up a little bit more, he's standing up underneath himself much better. Okay, you can see here that as he would walk, and over hard surfaces, he's going to get sore back in his heels. Whereas this, we've taken care of that. And this wasn't just one trimming, okay? This, this was over time where we recognized it and got his heels back underneath himself, okay? And honest to God, it's the same horse, um, okay? The opposite of that is the horse that's a little bit more upright, okay? Kind of your coon-footed horse, as you might say, okay? Um, where this horse is long and is, is, is closer to being long, he's long in his heel, his toe, um, except he's really elevated in his heel, okay? But his lines are not parallel, okay? This horse, too, is more prone to navicular disease and various types of things because he also tends to be the horse that's straight in his shoulder that everything's banging down on those front legs, okay? Here's a picture of one, and Sometimes it's their fault and sometimes it's not. This is really pretty much a coon-footed horse and you can see how long the heel is versus the toe, okay? This is a horse that actually her problem is, yeah, she's real camped um, under, real back at her knee, but this is a result of a shoulder injury, okay? This horse, her other leg isn't that, that, isn't that way. And this horse is a young horse, ran into something and, and injured her shoulder. And over time, because of the difference in the way that she tracks and moves, okay, these are problems that are down in her foot. So you need to recognize those things and work on, you know, one thing caused the problem and now here's our problem that we have to manage over time that something may be down on their foot. You need to recognize some of those things to try to help those horses be over time. Although this horse was not sound to ride, she was bred good, her family was good, she was going to make a wonderful brood mare, okay? She just wasn't physically able to ride and so that's why, you know, they were working on her to do some things to try to keep her sound is what <coughs> she possibly could be.